Welcome to the New Calculus channel. I am John Gabriel. In this video I'm going to be discussing one of the primary features of the New Calculus which is the auxiliary equation. The auxiliary equation is not possible uh, using Newton's flawed formulation uh, and there are several reasons for that. But uh, before I begin discussing the auxiliary equation, what I'd like to do is a brief comparison of the new calculus to Newton's flawed calculus. Well, on this side of the screen here, you'll see Newton's or Cauchy's derivative definition, which includes the limit. And here you'll see the new calculus definition. And because a lot of you don't understand the new calculus definition, let me give you a quick rundown of what that means. So, in the new calculus, f dash of x is equal to f of x plus n minus f of x minus m all over m plus n. So, if you have a given curve like that, and you're wanting to find the derivative at the point x. And let's draw a tangent in there. So you have a tangent line here, right? Oops, maybe not maybe not that one. Let's do it from there, say, like that. Okay. And then what you use in the new calculus is a a parallel secant line. Let's, assume that, let's just assume that that is parallel to the tangent line. It's very easy to do that because uh, it's a geometric action, as I've explained in another video. It doesn't matter what curve you have, a curve like that or a curve like this. It, wherever you draw a tangent line, <coughs> you can always construct a parallel secant. Similarly, in this case, so it doesn't really even rely on the shape of the curve or anything. Okay, so let's get rid of that quickly. Now, <coughs> um, <coughs> this distance here is m, and this distance here is n. So this point here is x minus m, and this point here is x plus n. And therefore, that point there is f of... <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, is, uh, oh, let's just redo that. That point there will be x plus n and f of x plus n. And this point here will be x minus m and f of x minus m. Okay, so in order to find the, d the derivative of the or the derivative of this curve, which is actually the slope of the green tangent line, all we need to do is find the slope of the parallel secant. And as you can see, that's exactly what happens here, isn't it? Yeah, if you have two points, then you can find the gradient of the line. And so that, in fact, is a derivative. Now, it's as simple as that. It really is as simple as that. And, of course, it's m plus n because this distance here is m plus n. Now, in the new calculus, there is a special relationship between x, m, and n. <coughs> and this relationship is what comes to, to the front and is remarkable in the new calculus as the auxiliary equation. Okay. What that means is that <coughs> you have infinitely many parallel secants to the tangent line at this point. And once you get to that point there, um, m and n are zero, yeah, because there is no secant there is no secant which has m equal to n equal to zero. That's Seeing there are infinitely many pairs here of m n, okay, infinitely many pairs of n, m n that will make the auxiliary equation true, and I'll explain that to you in a moment. It follows that 
the, the pair, the special pair zero zero, which belongs to the tangent line, um, cannot be a secant. So therefore, this value here can never be zero. Okay, never. It also is easy to prove, and I have proved it in several different ways, that m plus n is always a factor of the numerator. m plus n is always a factor. So there will always be one term in the numerator, like that, followed by some expression q, which may or may not contain uh, m plus n. Well, it will definitely contain a factor of m plus n at some point. And when we factor out m plus n, we'll have k plus q x m n. And of course, this expression here will always be 0 because k is the slope of all these infinitely many parallel secant lines and also the tangent line. Okay, and I'll come back to that in a while. Let's go back to the document and do a little comparison here. As you can see, Newton's finite difference never represents a tangent line gradient. Uh, in fact, the gradient that we need is defined by all the slopes of the infinitely many secant lines that are not parallel to the tangent line in a given interval. Whereas in the new calculus, as you see here, the finite difference always represents the gradient of a secant line, of a parallel secant line. So there are no ill-defined concepts such as limits, infinitesimals, or infinity. Okay. Now, Cauchy took Newton's finite difference approximation, this, and added the limit concept, which he conceived. So, uh, Newton didn't fully understand his method. I will have a link to this document in the comment section of my YouTube video, so you can actually read it there. So what Newton was doing was really experimenting. Uh, he was using a brute force method to find the slope of a tangent line. And it wasn't always the best approach, but Newton was the master of approximations and really most of his mathematics is based on approximations. Uh, the root approximation method, the binomial theorem, everything else that he did was really brute force in my opinion. Um, one thing about the new calculus is that the derivative is the same regardless of whether it's a general or a numeric derivative. In Newton's calculus and I'm not going to fully explain this here, but it's in the documentation that I have. The general derivative is not the same as a numeric derivative. Okay, so let's quickly look at what that means. Well, in Newton's calculus, he's got a point there in a tangent line, and this, what he does is he just takes secant lines that get closer to the tangent line. And so... If we look, Newton's calculus only works because he finds a general derivative, not a numeric derivative. So what is the difference between a general and a numeric derivative? Well, suppose we have the function f of x is equal to x squared. Then f dash of x is equal to 2x is called a general derivative. Okay. And an actual numeric derivative is something like f dash of a, where a is some actual value. All right. So if a was 1, then f dash of 1 is 2. That's a numeric derivative. So that's really the difference between a general and a numeric derivative. Right, let's continue. Uh, Leibniz didn't do much better than Newton, although he really was trying to do better. But Leibniz came up with the idea of differentials. Uh, Leibniz, Leibniz's differentials are not well defined, but in the new calculus, differentials are well defined. dy is equal or proportionate to the numerator, which is this. Similarly, dx is equal or proportion to the or proportional to the denominator, which is m plus n. Um, <coughs> and differentials are used masterfully in the new calculus. All right, so. Uh, here's the definition here, exactly. dy, the ratio dy to dx is exactly a ratio, a symbolic ratio, which is equal to 
the right hand side here. Now, the float calculus has many conceptual problems as demonstrated by this example here. So if you take a normal function like this, a common function like this, you end up with that and one has to imagine or guess a limit because h can never be zero. But in the new calculus, if you look on the right hand side here, um, using the definition we get 2x uh, plus n minus m which is exactly the tangent gradient. Okay, This here is the slope of the gradient line. You may say well there's still n, n and m there. It doesn't matter. There are infinitely many pairs that will satisfy that equation and in this case here n and m happen to be equal because we have a parabola. But that's not necessarily true for all functions this here is what we call the auxiliary equation. So if we take a look at this particular applet that I've designed here, we'll see that there are infinitely many pairs for n minus m. n minus m. Alright, so let's look. See? Infinitely many that will make it true. So the gradient is always 4. However, this is the flawed calculus and you'll see that the gradient is never 4. It gets closer and closer to four, okay, as we get as the distance becomes zero, and eventually the gradient is undefined at the point where at the most important point where we need it to be defined, the gradient is undefined. Thus what Cauchy did or Cauchy did was he defined the slope of the tangent line by all the finite differences that contain that are contained in this interval which contains the point he was trying to find, right? So he defined the derivative by everything that it is not. In other words, all the finite differences that contain in that interval that contain the point that we're trying to find the derivative at. And so just to go over this brief briefly, br just go over this briefly, um, if f of x is equal to x squared, then you can see that by using the new calculus definition, we have this on the left hand side here, and then simply reducing it, you'll see that there is always a factor or a value in there, which is 4, okay, so all the, all the terms in the numerator will have a factor of m plus n, but there is one that will always be the slope, and as you can see here, that value is k or 4, I call it k, but k just signifying some, some slope value. And this, the rest of it really doesn't actually matter. So the term k is really the slope. Very well. Let's continue. Now, m and n do, do not need to be set to zero, even though it is perfectly legal to do so after the quotient has been simplified. Okay, because there will be a term k which has no m and n, and that is a slope. But the rest of the value, the rest of the terms in m and n must equal to zero by definition of a parallel secant line. Yes, so there is no contradiction in this respect, and it must be noted that neither m nor n ever affect the gradient of the tangent line. I mean, obviously. Uh, any of these slopes here are not affected by n and m. If you had a similar uh, a triangle like that, a right angle, oh, I didn't do that very good, let me, let me do that again. If you had a right angle triangle like that, oops, and you constantly move towards that point there, the slope is not affected by m or n, the distances, the horizontal distances n or m. There is no effect on it. Okay, so it, maybe I could have extended it like that even if I wanted to. Well, okay. All right, so that's one of the comparisons, and you can read the rest yourself there. Also, there is a difference in the integral definition. This this is how the integral is defined in the new calculus. There are no limits, no infinitesimals, no infinitesimals or infinity. And this is Riemann's flawed definition. I've written another article on that which you can read, but Riemann's definition suffers from the same nonsense as Cauchy's definition. Um, okay, there is a new identity also in the new calculus, and here it is. It's the interval average and this numerator is the sum of all the derivative ordinates. 
um, f dash of c is actually equal to this left hand side here and you can study that up I've also written an article on that in the new calculus um, which in which it's possible to perform systematic integration every time regardless of whether you have a closed form function or not okay so in other words a series so you can integrate even if you get a series and the rest of the document describes more about the numeric and the general derivative so if you had an actual derivative there I mean if you wanted to find the derivative at this point here using Newton's method you'd end up only being able to find it through the general derivative but in the new calculus it's always the same that requires a bit of studying and you can do that yourself and I give an example here of the derivative at x equals to 2 at x is equal to half and I'll show you how it works in the new calculus and how it doesn't work in Newton's calculus so you would have to study that it's not very complicated and so Cauchy, Cauchy's definition basically says that a derivative exists at a point A if and only if a derivative exists for every point in the interval containing A except perhaps A well if you don't think that that is ill-formed I hold out little hope for you and so now let's go to the final slide of the of the this presentation as I said earlier on the auxiliary equation doesn't is not always as simple as you see it in this slide here which is just which is just n minus m yeah so in the case of the quadratic <coughs> in the case of the quadratic the auxiliary equation is just q x m n is equal to n minus m is equal to zero okay the auxiliary equation is always equal to zero in the case of this particular equation here it's equal to this n minus m 3x minus 2 plus m squared minus mm plus n squared and so if you move this point along here the yellow point you can see what happens um, here these are the distances from the green point to the end points of the parallel secant line here yes that's a tangent line in red and here's the the trapezium this side of the trapezium which is a parallel secant and you can look at the values of n m and the green point abscissa which is x or c and see that they're always related okay always uh, always related q will always be zero and there is a special pair a special m n pair zero which gives us the tangent equation but it doesn't have to be zero even after this difference quotient has been simplified although it is perfectly legal to set m and n to zero after the simplification and I've discussed this particular app in another uh, YouTube video so I would encourage you to go and look at that and study it so that's uh, just a brief outline of the auxiliary equation in the new calculus there is a lot you can do with this um, in fact it has already been used effectively in uh, software development, in engineering, in science, in nonlinear regression, uh, in causal systems. Uh, you cannot use uh, the auxiliary equation or even the Gabriel polynomial which I haven't discussed in this uh, YouTube video you cannot do these things with the, the standard flawed calculus in other words neither the Cauchy definition of derivative nor the Riemann integral nor the Taylor, Taylor polynomial will allow you to do any of these things um, and so that's pretty much it on the on the uh, auxiliary equation I trust you have enjoyed this presentation and I hope you'll be joining me again on the New Calculus channel for another exciting episode. <laughs> Take care.